everybody celebrating tonight under a week. Please stand so we can honor you under a week. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Good. Awesome. Right over here. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Very good. 30 days. Anybody 30 days? 30 days. Come on. Here we go. Yeah. Right here. All right. Good job. Good job. Right there. Good job. How about 60? Good job. 60. 60 right here. Right here. All right. Proud of you guys. 90 days. 90, 90 days. right awesome. here, right Terry. Right there. Good job. Awesome. Good. All right, we've got six months. Anybody six months? Six months? Oh, I thought you were celebrating six months. You just fooled me, that guy walking around. <laughs> All right, how about nine months? Anybody with nine months? Nine All, months. Right, All right, right here, right, right here. here. Yay. Over here. Right back Good there. job, brother. Good job. How about one year? We've one got, year. I know, on Facebook. There, Sammy, one year. Right. right there, one year. Woo! Anybody more than one year tonight celebrating? Right there. How many, Sarah? Two years, Two Sarah years. Winter. Awesome. Yes. How many? Six, Six years. Good job. Good job. Yes. Awesome. Christy Bettis. How many, honey? Nine, Nine years. Wow. Woo! Yeah. Congratulations, you guys. All right. So, women, Life Recovery Spiritual 12 Steps is canceled tonight. I know. It's a bummer. Next week it resumes because Mandy is at Wild Waves. Okay. I was going to have somebody, I was going to have Sarah step in, but she said nobody would probably have their homework. Do you guys have your homework all done? No, they're going to say yes. Okay, probably not. <laughs> All right, so next week, don't miss it. How many need jobs? Let's just see a show of hands. How many need jobs? Okay, it's dwindling every week, but oh, there's some here, good, so good. Okay. run out there. Right there. So we have Simmons here. There she is in the back, pretty girl in the back. Yeah, she'll be at the front door tonight with the, the forms, application forms, and she's going to get you guys hooked up. With felony friendly jobs. It's awesome. It's okay. No and reason not to work. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. What? No reason not to go to work. That's right. It's priorities. All right. And next week, guys, uh, mark your calendars. Next week, we have after service breaking bread. So come hungry. And uh, we're also going to combine it with our summer movie nights. So it'll be a great party yeah, next week. It'll we're be fun. Just party around here. It'll it's one big party. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be watching the movie Home. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Isn't Out in the field. Yeah, right the over there. Screen. Bring your appetite and Dolby surround sound. blankets. Dolby surround sound, huh? Oh, look at him. No, don't even say that. We'll just pretend. All right, Miss Jada, come up here, honey. All right, guys. This is our little promo. Last week we did ten dollars specials. These are normally fifteen dollars. These are the lovely cinch bags. Should, should we have them sign a disclaimer if they get hit in the eye? We're not okay, yeah. Everybody, heads up, okay? So every section is going to get thrown a cinch bag, okay? So tonight only they're ten dollars. Tonight only ten dollars. They go back up to fifteen. So okay, go for okay. it. Drum roll. Where's the drum roll? Oh, that's good. That's good. Woo! Woo! Oh, yeah! Oh! Do- oh. <laughs> All right. Did you? Oh. Yeah, we'll go okay, throw, throw that, that one right over there. Wad it up. Oh. Wad it up. Oh, she's just going to take it. She's going to take it. You don't. <laughs> she might hurt somebody. <laughs> All right. Let's give Jada a hand. All right. All right. Thanks, Jada. And last but not least, our lovely friends at Lifeline Connections. They're doing a fundraiser, $14. Is that right, Tracy? $14 a shirt. And I got to show you. Billy, stand up, Billy Peck. Where are you, Billy? Billy is always like right in the middle of things. Where is he? Anyways, isn't that so cool? What does it say? He did the artwork. What does it say? It says, Fighting. Oops, it's wrinkled. Fighting for a healthier community. He's got a couple of boxing gloves. Yay. All right. So if you're interested, please see Tracy Jennings. Raise your hand, Tracy. Tonight for $14, it helps Lifeline. All right. St- everybody want to stand up and shake somebody's hand, and we'll get into the word.
Are you guys ready? Are you ready for for chain reaction? Are you guys ready? Check it out. That's what you guys are going to look like taking over Clark County and driving out addiction, right? Are you ready? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Everyone in this room, stand to your feet. Just one moment. Talking tonight about a chain reaction. And in order, I believe, to have a chain reaction, we need to stage the celebration of our life. And we need to celebrate the things that, that we've got going. And I was looking in Nehemiah this week about... Um, when they rebuilt the wall and um, it had been torn down for 150 years dysfunction and mayhem and all kinds of things going on in their community and it reminds me a lot of what's gone on in in your life and in my life over the past years the the breakdown of the wall the breakdown of the protection of your life and and all of those things and in Nehemiah it says uh, the Israelites are gathering to celebrate. And it says, Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy cho choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And some of you here tonight, maybe you're grieving over the things that you've lost over the years. Or maybe you're grieving over the, the family relationships that have been broken down or the things in your life that that have seemed to be chaotic. And, and I would tell you tonight that this scripture says that today is the day to rejoice and to, um, to do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Would you pray with me right now? Father, I come before you tonight and as we've read this scripture, I pray that the walls would be broken down that have been put up and the enemy tries to hold you out and hold you at bay. But tonight I pray that you would penetrate our hearts. You would do something miraculous. That you would change the outcome of people's life tonight based on your Holy Spirit and what you want to accomplish in our life, God. There's people here that have walked into this room that are still high on methamphetamines or high on heroin. Father, I come against that in the name of Jesus tonight and I pray for sobriety, Father. I pray that they would walk out of this place sober and, and put together whole, God, as we rebuild the wall and as we see what you want to accomplish in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. And I am excited about this message tonight because I believe that that um, if we're going to have a chain reaction in our life, that we need to have a chain reaction of you going and sharing with other people in your life to make a difference. Tell somebody sitting beside you that the party started and you better get with it. Tell somebody, it's the, the party started. Don't want to miss it. You know, we have a tendency to think of success as a, as a final destination. But what if you were still a long way off from where you'd like to be? How many of you are still a long way off from where you'd like to be tonight? All right, good, because we're going to grow together. H how do we find both contentment and strength? How do we find both contentment and strength? to keep stretching, to keep going? How do we create a chain reaction? I mean, uh, when I think about a celebration, my wife, she knows how to celebrate. She's the yay God girl. She, she runs around and she's a cheerleader and she, 
She just empowers people as she, she, she comes into contact with them. And she's, she's inspiring. And, and even birthdays and things like that. I mean, it's got to be a big deal. It's got to be on the day. Um, it's got to happen. And, and there's something about a celebration. But I believe tonight that we've got to have a celebration. And uh, you think about the priests and the Levites and the security guards. And, and in Nehemiah 7.73 it says... The, the priests, the Levites, and the security guards, singers, and temple support staff, along with some others and the rest of the people of Israel, all found a place to live in their own towns. In other words, the, the walls had been rebuilt. They came back and they found a place. Just like you, the walls are being rebuilt and you're coming back and you're finding a place. You're finding a niche, a place where you fit in and, and something God's going to do through you. And, and then you look at Nehemiah 8, 1 through 6. It says, all the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. And I don't know if this was before Nixon or what, but before the water gate. Some of you are too young to know about that. They told Ezra that the teacher of the law to bring out the book of the law of Moses. Listen to what's happening here. Which the Lord of the, had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra and the priests brought the law before the assembly. They, they, You've got to realize what's happening here. The wall has been broken down. They've, they've built it back up and now they want to celebrate. And so... So they come together and Ezra and the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men, women, and all of who are unable or who were able to understand it. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon and he faced the square before the water gate. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think there's many of you that would stay here and listen to me preach from daybreak to noon. Uh, come on, you're... Think about it. They, they stood there and, and shared the, the word of God. They shared the law... Um, from daybreak till noon, as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively. Get that. They listened attentively, no smoke breaks, no potty breaks, attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the teacher of the law, stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Do you realize what happened there? They were so intent on celebrating what God had done in their lives that they, they built a platform in order to celebrate that occasion. And beside him, on his right, stood all these other dudes. Um, and him and him and him. And then Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. Get the picture. And as he opened it up, the people stood up Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen. They bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Why, did they, why were they so intent on what they were sharing that day? It's because the walls had been built up in their life. The wall had been rebuilt. It had been restructured. And they were excited about the fact now they had something to protect them. Just like you and me, you, we come in and we come from addiction. We come from all this mayhem and all this stuff in our lives. And we come into a place... And, and you, you come into a place and now God has rebuilt something in your life. And so when we come to church and we come to a celebration, I'm going to show you how to celebrate tonight. That we should be celebrating what God has done in your life. Think about where you've come from and where you are today. And it's amazing. I mean, how do you gain contentment in your life without becoming complacent? It's a big question. How do you gain contentment? I mean, we, we have to have a point of celebration. And, and I'm talking to myself tonight. I'm preaching this sermon to myself like I usually do. As I get going so fast and furious that I don't a lot of times stop along the way to celebrate what God is doing right now. And I think we got to do that tonight. I mean, we, I think we, a lot of times we get correction and we're trying to help you and show you the right way and, and point you in this direction and tell you not to do that so you don't get this and, and all of those things. But I think tonight I want to celebrate. What are the points of celebration? When is, when is your then going to be that you celebrate? I believe it's tonight. I do. Some of us in this room are a place, at a place where you've never been before tonight. You're in a place where you've never been before. I was thinking about it today as I was sitting on the back porch and, and um, preparing for this sermon. And the thought just came to me about just the people in our sphere of influence, just the people in this room. And, and then I thought about all of the people at, at Hands Across the Bridge that are going to be standing up and proclaiming their clean time. And I started thinking about it, and, and then I got my calculator out, and then I started thinking, and I, and, and I had another cup of coffee, and then things got really weird. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, then it got even weirder, and so this is what I came up with. 
Better take a drink. Carissa, stand up. Where are you? Carissa, 10 years in addiction, right? 10 years in addiction. 166 days clean, right? Sarah Stratton, 19 years in addiction, 67 days clean. Matt, 17 years in addiction. Stand up. Each one of you that I'm calling your name, stand up. Stay standing. 17 years in addiction, 6 days clean today. Josh, Josh Jensen, 7 years in addiction, 717 days clean today. Aaron, Aaron Oxford, 20 years in addiction, 3,457 days clean today. Brock, Brock, 22 years in addiction, 465 days clean today. Wendy, 17 years in addiction, 2,251 days clean today. James Dean, 24 years with the walls broken down, 1,277 days clean today. William, 30 years going an institution after institution has 408 days clean today. Kim, 27 years in addiction, broken down walls, 153 days clean today. Cindy, 30 years in addiction, 955 days clean today. Terry, 37 years in addiction, 93 days clean today. Woo! Mo, 44 days, 44 years in addiction, 15 days clean today. Jennifer, 29 years in addiction, 20 days clean today. Shannon, 10 years in addiction, 2,582 days clean. Billy, 30 years in addiction, 277 days clean. Jada, 8 years in addiction, 33 days clean. Tim, 10 years in addiction, 33 days clean. Christy Bettis, 20 years away from God and then 3,282 days clean. Ken Jennings, 20 years, has 4,669 days clean. Tracy, 7 years in addiction, 5,500 and or 5,157 days clean. The list goes on and on. Heather Evans, 10 years, 4,366 days clean. Chris Attaway, 37 years, 2,206 days clean. Nikki Graves, 13 years, 3, 314 days clean. Larry, 24 years in addiction, 750 days clean. Sarah, two years in addiction, 117 days clean. Do you realize that the walls had been broken down just in those people's lives for 556 years? 556 years. Do you realize how many clean days we have in just that group? 42,913 days of celebration. Every one of you that has clean time in this place, stand to your feet right now. Let's celebrate what God has done in our life. We're going to drive out drug addiction in Clark County and Tallis County. Let's shout to the Father tonight. What has He done in your life? It's amazing. And that's what the people, Ezra and Nehemiah, that's why they built a platform. And they said, we're going to stand up here and we're going to celebrate the fact that the walls have been built up and that God is on the throne and He's still moving. And you are a part of that. And we're going to go and we're going to take this community. Woo! We need to learn how to celebrate. I think you got it. I'm excited. I'm excited. Can you imagine what's going to happen? The chain reaction that's going to take place as you begin to move and groove into the things of God and instead of running around out there in the bushes trying to cop a dope bag, you're, you're going to be in something, you're going to be coming across people and you're going to go, yeah, you got to get what I got. Whew. It's good stuff, isn't it? You see, God is always staging something in our lives 
that we can use to celebrate His goodness. And, and I think a lot of times we look at the funk and the dysfunction when, when He wants us to bring to the forefront of, of what do you have to celebrate. And in Nehemiah, the Israelites are gathering to celebrate the completion of the rebuilding of the wall. Just like tonight, we're gathering to celebrate the rebuilding. What has He rebuilt in your life? And we read, and the people, they, they begin to weep because they, they realized what they didn't have and now what they had. And I, I think about, instead of weeping, they ought to be celebrating what God has done. And, and so tonight I'm thinking about, there's sometimes tension in, in our lives and all kinds of things. And some of us, um, celebration doesn't come naturally because we've had such amazing struggles in our life and we've had so many things that have pulled us back from one from what our calling is and so we have a tendency to just sort of hunker down and and i want you to unfold tonight i want you to be able to celebrate and and i believe a lot of times without correction or our tendency needs to be that we need to celebrate others and and um if we're going to reach our fullest potential i i think there's four stages of of this uh chain reaction and this celebration phase that takes place and and we see it first with jeremiah and in, in nehemiah as as they built it up um, as nehemiah built up the walls of jerusalem physically to protect the city um, and that stage was built to proclaim god's word we must build a foundation up for our lives both physically and spiritually and i, I believe that and i believe that you're beginning to do that and you see our our lives aren't just all physical or are all spiritual. We must balance the two. And, and I think in today's culture, it's easy to long after success and, and to hesitate to, um, to make the sacrifice necessary to realize it. I mean, we want to have all that clean time. We want to have all that thing. But do we want to put in the work? <laughs> do we want to have the sacrifice? You see, it takes a lot to, to get into recovery and to do the steps and to do the work and to let God empower you and to stay focused and not look at that man or not look at that woman and and to be there and do this deal and and know that that god has something better for you at the end of the deal and and god has something better for you as to celebrate each day as you succeed you see i think a lot of times you you get so focused on well when i just get this when i just get that when i just get that out there who has under a week clean today stand on your feet you're our heroes today you're our heroes today because god is doing something in you right now that, that you want to celebrate this day right now. When you get 10 years, you want to think back to right now, this day where, where you were standing right here and you want to think back and you want to begin to celebrate. And, and that's what it's about. Every day is an opportunity to allow God to build something into our lives. And I don't want you to miss that. You've got to take that and do something with it. And when we make the effort and the sacrifice to build the foundation, it, it's our opportunity to celebrate what God is doing continually in our lives. And... Um, I think a lot of times we have entitlement issues, and uh, I heard that somewhere. Um, I've seen that somewhere. You want God to bless you, but you never want to give sacrificially. And I believe that the people in this program that are sacrificing are seeing the most results, and God's just pouring it into them, and it's overflowing because they're starting to rub off on other people in a good way, and it's some good stuff. The next thing is we've got to break it down. When the Israelites gathered together to celebrate... There was still plenty of work to do. I mean, sure, they'd rebuilt the wall and they felt pretty good. And I think a lot of times we can rest on our laurels. I've heard of that sometimes. And we can just be, be content. But I, I think we've got to be striving for more. And there was an infrastructure within the walls that needed to be rebuilt. There was still some things. So, so you've got your foundation of recovery, but there's still some things coming at you. Just like for them, the, the walls had been rebuilt, but there were still things that they had to deal with. And, and they took the chance and they celebrated the progress. And if we never learn to celebrate our starts, we'll never be able to sustain our momentum. And each day should be a new start. Amen? Each day should be a new start. And so as, you, as your feet hit the floor in the morning and you begin to say, God, I, I thank you for this day and I thank you for what you're going to do. And you celebrate that start. It gives you momentum to go out the door. And then when you run into the dope man at Winco parking lot, you just go, dude, really? You're still out here messing around? What? Right? You've got some momentum to where you don't even think twice and you, you've got God on board. And if we, if, you see, if we all ever celebrate um, and really get this, it'll be amazing what God does in you. It will grow increasingly. increasingly um, 
It'll be amazing. And we must look at our lives and say, I, I may not be where I want to go, but I thank God that I've made it this far. Right? Breaking down the stages of our celebration. We find the strength to keep going. The next thing is, pick a point. I think back of this scripture and the Israelites, they, they, this wasn't any special day. They just chose a day to celebrate. It wasn't a significant day. It wasn't like some holiday or some Christmas thing. It, it was just a, a day. They said, you know what? We've got this done. We need to celebrate. Just like tonight, we're celebrating what God has done in your life. And they picked a point. We don't have to wait for a specific day or a substantial reason to celebrate. Aren't you glad that you can just party right now whenever you want to? <laughs> and it's free. That one's free. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. No warrants. No backseat of the patrol car. It's free. You just get to, yeah, praise God. He's doing something amazing in my life. I got a clear head. I can focus. I'm not twacking out. I'm good. I mean, we can celebrate the victories that God allows to us to experience every day. It says it even says it in the Word of God. It says it in Psalms 118, 24. It reminds us that the Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad in it. I mean, be glad in it. I mean, if we want to walk by faith, we sometimes have to simply pick a point to focus on and say, I'm going to celebrate where I'm at and then keep going. I'm just going to celebrate, right? Woo! Take a deep breath. Look where you are right now. It's amazing. The new, they had to stop and celebrate so they'd have the strength to do the next thing that God had in store for them. What, what does God have in store for you, really? Man, it'll blow your mind. It gives me goosebumps just to think about it. We have to celebrate where we are. I drove into the parking lot this last week and started thinking about in the 1980s when I was actually pouring concrete around this building. Sidewalks. And I just, I sat in the parking lot and I, I, I was overwhelmed with emotion. Thinking about where we are today. And you know, I never really thought about it, but I began to celebrate 277 people here last week in this auditorium getting some recovery and doing the thing. I mean, just, just pressing into God. And, and, uh, and I'm out there just running and gunning and doing what I can to make things happen and picking up furniture and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And, and, and I, just got, I just had to stop. And God says, celebrate what you got. Celebrate where you're at. And I begin to celebrate and I begin to think about you and what God's doing in your life. And I begin to think, you know, this ain't bad. A few days before that, I was just really depressed. A lot of things just overwhelming. I want to look at the list of all the stuff to do. And all the dreams and the visions that, that we have. Vicki and I sit and we just think and talk all the time about what are we going to do next? What do you want us to do, God? Where are we going to go? And so, out of that depression came, this ain't bad. This ain't bad what God's doing. And the only way I'm going to have the strength to go on is to stop and celebrate. And even God celebrated as He created the world. If you look at Genesis, it talks about it in Genesis 1. It says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light and said, man, that is good. Man, I, that's good. He kept going day after day, and every time he did something or created something, he just sat back. That's good. If God did it, why wouldn't we do it? We're, do you realize that we've, we're getting momentum every day, and we should be just amazed at... I, I think about little kids learning to walk. It's so funny to watch a little kid to walk, but it's what's even more funny is to watch the adult having the kid come to you. The kid can't hardly walk, and they're just <laughs> falling down, right? And, and everybody's clapping, yeah, that's awesome, good, yeah, all right, yeah, come on, come on, come on, right over here, oh, you're so cute, dude, right? And the kid can't walk. The kid's not ready for a race. I mean, it's pitiful how the kid's walking. 
It's going to take a nosedive any second. <laughs> Hit his head on a coffee table. Right? But we celebrate. We celebrate. Yes, come to dad. Come to dad. Come on. Oh, dad, honey, did you see that? He took two steps and he said, Dada, isn't that amazing? Right? So why don't we celebrate when we get on down the road? You know why? Because the enemy, the enemy sees you taking those steps. And he sees you and he wants to throw you off balance. And he wants to take your legs out from under you. And we need to celebrate the momentum. We need to celebrate as you guys begin to walk in recovery. And the devil hates it when you celebrate a small start. Because you see, he, he sees that small start and you begin to celebrate that small start. And he's going to the demons, oh no, they're celebrating the small start. That means they're going to get some momentum. And th there's no telling who they're going to go tell, right? There's no telling who they're going to go get to come onto their side. We got to do something quick. And you know he can't do anything because you're God's. He can't do anything because you're a bot with a price and, and, and God has put his spirit into you. And all you've got to do is take control of that and say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. And you're going to celebrate. You see, in Zechariah, it says, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. The seven lamp presented the eyes of the Lord and the search around the world. You see, it, it don't despise the, the small beginnings. You may be here tonight and feel like I, I haven't arrived yet. None of us have. Right. right? None of us have. Just keep walking. When we remodeled a house way back and... I remember we built onto the side of this house and, and we built the foundation and put the foundation in and I was so excited um, to pour that foundation and, and um, I got the plate all down around it and it was square too, guys. It was a square foundation. It was, Shane, it wasn't, it wasn't out of square. I mean, it was Nat's eyebrow on, right? It's looking good. I mean, the, and I was so proud of that foundation, right? And um, Vicky wasn't quite as proud as the foundation as I was. Cause, cause, I mean, I could see cool stuff right there in that foundation because I knew that if that foundation wasn't right, that the beautiful walls and the drapes and the carpets and all the stuff that I was going to put in it for her was never going to happen, right? And you know, that's the way it is with our life. If the foundation isn't right, if the foundation isn't laid down right, then the thing that God wants to build you up into will never take place. And so today, I don't care where you're at, we need to celebrate the beginning. We need to celebrate the foundation because a foundation is impressive. A foundation is amazing. Amen. Take it from me, it's amazing. Because as those walls begin to go up, I begin to see progress. And it was all because of the foundation that was laid. And for you and your life, it's all because of the foundation that God is laying in your life right now. Lifeline people that you're going to be able to. Are you paying attention over there? <laughs> you're doing good tonight. I know, I know how it is to come, come here and just have to focus. But I know that God is building a foundation for you guys. And he's building something up and, and he's calling you out to do some crazy stuff that you'll never, you'll never dream could happen in your life. But I'm here to tell you, there's people sitting in this room. I, they, I, I could just look all over this room and see different people that, that have come through all the hurdles that you guys are facing right now. And it's because of this foundation. They, they tripped into this, this service one day and they, they heard the gospel and, and the Spirit came and penetrated their hearts and they, they said yes to Jesus and they began to fill that foundation. And then all of the pieces just began to, to, to go into place and it began to flow in their life and, and they began to be somebody totally different. And in closing tonight, I want to talk to you just a little bit about going back to Nehemiah. <clears throat> the Levites and all those other dudes. I don't know why they got to have such weird names. <laughs> just to mess us up, probably, Glenn. That's just it. Just to, just to laugh at us. But anyway, so we're going down to instruct the people in the law. And while the people were standing there, listen, can you picture it? Can you picture it? Because that's, that's where we're at tonight. We're in this place, and, and remember, they built a platform. And they built that platform specifically to party. 
I love you guys. And they read from the book of the law, just like we're doing tonight. We're lead, reading from the Word of God. This is an iPad that has six different versions of the Bible on here. Well, this thing's really spiritual. And they instructed the people in the law. It was way more boring back then than it was today, right? I mean, today, we, the Word of God is active and powerful and sharper than a two-headed sword, and it divides, it, 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 it takes care of all the stuff. And, and so when you hear the Word of God, and you guys realize that you have the ability, um, aside from Facebook, you can actually download an app on your phone that has the Word of God, and it, it can speak to you on a daily basis. You, you can push this little button that says, yeah, I want to hear it. I pushed that the other day and I go, whoa, the guy's talking to me, <laughs> reading scripture to me. Isn't that amazing? Where was I? So they read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. And I hope tonight that you understand what's being read. And then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra and the priest, the big dudes, the teacher of the law and the Levites who, who were instructing the people said to all of them, this is the day. And this day is holy to the Lord your God. Guys, quit mourning. Quit weeping over the sadness that the enemy created in your life. You didn't do that. Don't take ownership of that because that was the enemy's plan to destroy you. Take ownership of what God's going to do in your life, right? It says, don't weep or mourn for all the people who have been weeping as they listened to the words of the law of Nehemiah. They couldn't get their head around the fact that it was going to change now that the wall was rebuilt. It is going to change now that you've turned your life over to God. You're not going to no longer be an addiction, amen? You're no longer going to be out there in left field. You're, you're going right down the middle and you're going to do amazing things. And it said then, it said, go and enjoy cho choice foods and drinks. I wanted to buy everybody here a rock star tonight. But I couldn't afford it. Because <laughs> it said right there, go enjoy choice foods and drinks. I was going to bring Snickers and rock stars. <laughs> it was a thought that counted, right? And then send some to those who have nothing prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And then Nehemiah encouraged the people to celebrate and told them to eat choice foods and drinks. And the part there that really got to me is that he said, send some to those who have nothing prepared. In other words, encourage someone else. And I believe this is where the chain reaction takes place. Is sometimes when we feel like we need to be encouraged, joy can actually be found by encouraging others. Right? And that's nothing. There's nothing the devil hates more than when you celebrate someone else's. And when you celebrate someone else and you yourself need to be celebrated. Right? I mean, you, you're out there in a funk and you're just all messed up in your head and you're living in your head again and you're thinking about all those old times and, and, and you say, no, doggone it, where's my phone? You got my phone? You go over here and you just, okay, I, my life sucks right now and I'm really ticked off. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna send a text to this guy and encourage him. I know he's having a bad day. God bless you, brother. I love you. I'm so thankful that you're doing great in your addiction. And you're changed, right? And then it comes back and you say, God, man, thanks, guy. I you have no idea how I needed that right now. And you were all messed up in your addiction and your head and thinking all this stuff and having a rough day and, and you reached out to somebody else and that's what it was meaning when it said to go share some with others that didn't have none. Or We don't always know why we're experiencing pain, but God is working in all of it for the good that those who love Him. And the very fact that we're struggling is a sign that, that God's building a stage for us to proclaim His power. To the world around us. He's building a stage. Can you see it? Can you picture it tonight? He, he's building a stage. He wants you to get up there and he wants you to celebrate. And our perspective shifts and when we take our sorrows and turn it out and we begin to take our sorrows and turn it to where I may have it be a rough day but 
I'm going to encourage my brother the same way Ezra spoke from the platform. God is giving each of us a platform to encourage someone else. And you see what happens. It's a chain reaction. (laughs) It's a chain reaction. And so tonight, as you're in this place and... No, I want to... Think you're confused. I'm really confused, baby. I don't even know where I was going or what I was doing tonight, but I think we got there. Guys. I want you to have a platform to celebrate on. And the best celebration that you could do tonight is to turn your life and your will over to the care of God. The God as you know Him and the God as you know Him is our Savior, Jesus Christ, who stands at a door and He knocks. And tonight He's knocking and He's saying, I want to begin a chain reaction in your life and you're never going to be the same. So if you're here tonight and you would say, I need what you're talking about. I'm going to give a card to each one that wants to say, I, I just need, I need this in my life. Chain reaction. Hey guys. Hey, how are you? It's good to see you again. This guy's going to start a chain reaction all on his own back here, I can tell. I'm going to be watching you. Proud of you, girl. You got this this time. Wow. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what's going to happen? You guys going to do this for real? Or are you just going to play around? Okay, because... You guys, are, you guys are making a commitment tonight to do something different than you've ever done before. And, and this is how we're going to this is how we're going to take over this community and this is how we're going to I'm going to run out of cards. I'm going to be spending I don't know how many more weeks on chain reaction because I believe that there's there's just a lot of stuff to be done and um, one of the parts that I want you guys to do is next week everybody in this room should invite somebody to this place because this is life changing and that's the only way we're going to start the chain reaction will be when you step out and when you begin to seek somebody else and you begin to bring them along and and every one of you can think of somebody right now. And I want you to begin at this point to begin praying for them and saying, okay, this, I, I'm going to target that person. Remember how you used to target that bag? <laughs> you need to go target that person. I want everybody that took a card. Uh, uh, to, if you really want to start a chain reaction, come stand right here with your feet right up against this. <clears throat> Babe, can you come? Glenn and Teresa, can you come? Larry, can you come and just stand behind some of these guys? And Wow. Whew. Wow. Can you feel it? (laughs) 
let me just say something uh, just to add. Pastor Bill's great message tonight. Wasn't that a great word tonight? You know, how, how many of you, how many of you out in the audience in here get tormented by your past? The, you, you know, I mean, you just get that thought for your past. You know why that is? The, the enemy keeps reminding us of our past. That's all he's got. He has nothing else. Uh, he's, all he's got is what existed before. He doesn't have anything else. That means you're on the right path right now. So the more you get tormented by your past, the enemy's going, that's all I got with these people anymore. Because they're starting to chain reaction. They're kicking butt and taking names. And all I can do is remind them of their past, which doesn't exist anymore. God says when he throws that past out, he throws it as far as from the east is from the west. And your past is past at last. So every time the the enemy comes to you and reminds you of your past, you should remind him of his future because he's a defeated foe. Amen. Amen. Let's just lift one hand to heaven. Say this when they say, Father God, I want to start a chain reaction. So I give my life to you. Use me, Lord. I'm yours and you're mine. I place my life in your hands because I'm done. I'm now yours in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Have a good day.